do our due diligence to make sure that our needs are getting represented, it could ultimately constrain. It was more trying to say that it's important for the BAs and the SMEs to some extent to understand the service contract. This is a, you know, it's part of our work, I guess. Is Absolutely. What I'm All right, I'm going on mute. Okay. <laughs> Perhaps. Perhaps I didn't do it very eloquently. A little shaken by all the activity. Um, Christina, are you on? I am. Can you guys hear me? We can. Do you want to grab control of the screen? Or would you like me to st Okay, you got it. <laughs> well, or you, Just uh, it's We've been having some issues with, with it jumping back and forth between full screen and so just, if it does that while you're presenting, just keep going. <laughs> okay. Well, I have got only one little screen here, so I'm, I'm going to try and I might do a little jumping myself. Um, so I'm not going to be able to do the, the, the slideshow part, but I think you guys should be able to see it okay. Do, do, you, want, do you want me to um, project and you can just talk through it and let me know when to advance? Well, because I'm going to, the reason I want to flip through is I want to go to the actual map. Right, gotcha. Gotcha. So, okay. Pray continue. Okay. So I'm um, I'm Christina uh, from USC, and I'm just going to do a quick introduction on the application map. Um, it should be this. I think I'm going to also finish a little bit early. I don't think it should take very long, but I just want to answer some basic questions, and then people can take a look at this map later on. So the first question is just what is the story? This um, application map, and it's made up of three different elements. One is story arc swim lanes, then there's a site map, and then there's a functionality table. And here's where I wanted to go and take a look at this. The first piece is the, um, the swim lanes. These are, this, what this is is an effort to communicate the enrollment at an extremely high level that groups some of the functionality and the features into UX-friendly stories. So they don't go into the level of detail that's found in the system requirements or in some of the A and D pages, and they're not as specific as a user story or even an epic user story, but they can help show a UX designer a really big picture of who's doing what and where one user's work leans on another user. Um, to start right now, there's just three and a half story arcs, three and a half, because there's course offering to completion, program offering to completion, student planning, and then the half one is administrative and other activities. Those are things that support the story arcs, but they don't fit as neatly into a beginning to end story. So those looking at those, there's the course offering to completion, program offering to completion, student planning, administrative, and other. Um, and just looking very quickly at this um, course offering to completion, you can see that it encompasses a number of the different functional areas. There's the setup and um, course offering, registration, scheduling, assessment, all of those kind of tie together from beginning to end. You can see that Martha, the central admin, she's one of our personas that we have had for years now, um, does the set of us with academics. Mm -hmm. Can you bump up your screen resolution a little bit? Sure. Control plus a few times. Couple Is more. This, hold on. Yeah, and you're sharing your Skype, FYI. Yeah, I know. I, I didn't want to, in case I need to turn up the volume or uh, mute okay. suddenly cool. or something, I wanted it handy, but I can see that that okay. might not work. Um, cool. Is this That was more is this code visible? for letting everybody else know. <laughs> Go ahead. Is this visible? Yep, that looks, that looks good. Okay. It's better. I mean, some of, the term, some of the words are pretty small, but that's okay. People will have the link, and they can look at it later. Yeah, for the yeah. I'm just introducing it here so you can go through and, and take a look at it yourself later. So very quickly, um, this is Martha. She's the one who would set up the academic year, define registration periods, do the rollover. Carol, the department admin, would come in and fill in some of the details for the course offering. Then those would get scheduled and published the student registers for courses, and the professor or faculty member, whoever's doing the grading, would grade the courses, and then the academic record gets updated, and the student can view things like that. So it's, again, it's a very high level overview, but it gives an, at least an outline of what's happening and who's involved in, in the process. Um, the next piece is the sitemap. 
And this is, as it says on, on my PowerPoint slide, it's an early stage site map for, for enrollment. You can just see what you can do and where you can do it from. This is um, it's mildly interactive. It's hard to see now that I've bumped up the size. But, but how it works is there's functionality and features listed over here on the, on the left, organized by the story arcs. And by clicking on one of the pieces of functionality, different areas of the, the map over here will highlight, showing you where the person would go to do something with that. And below everything, which I'm scrolling down to, so you can see, there's a little table that, that um, talks a little, in a little bit more detail about what, is, what would be E1, what would be E2 or 3 or beyond, who the actors are, and how frequently they do something, and then some of the links. And the frequency is a very broad scale. It's something that's just rarely, kind of seasonally, or regularly. Um, that kind of detail later in, in doing some design work. And this is, this is kind of a high level, again, first, first pass at, at that kind of functionality. So using this, you just kind of click, click through over here, and you can see the different areas, get kind of a big picture of what what different spaces are going to be involved in enrollment. Um, and the different tabs show different, different things. There's the student side that you might see if, if you're looking for programs that are set, might be the student or making, doing a learning plan as a student feature. But then the advising goes back and shows you that that's happening in the advisor dashboard or applying and releasing holes where that happens. And this, again, this is, the, um, this is a very much a living and working document, a work in progress. So I fully expect all of this to change during development and evolve. Things might move around or disappear or grow into multiple screens. But um, that's an how that works and how you use it. And the reason it's called on the top of the screen, it's a skeleton site map. The reason it's that is because it really, this is very pared down. It's not, obviously, it's not showing every light box or every, every single screen, but it's giving a, a broader, higher level idea of, of the functionality and the screens that would be involved. Um, the last piece is this functionality table, which is really a consolidation of the table, these tables that were down here on the site map. And this is just showing that the, again, it's organized by story arc, showing the functionality, what would be an E1, what would be an E2, and who's doing those, who's doing those functions, and then a link to any UX artifacts that are available. This is set up so you can really scan vertically and try, start to see which particular users are going to be in, interacting with the environment how. So you could scan down, for example, and see what, what the instructor cares about, what pieces of, of functionality the instructor cares about, or what an active student cares about versus a prospective student or their advisor, or how the central ad, admin, what, what different pieces he or she would, would touch and care about. This is, again, it's a consolidation, but it's just a way to, to look at kind of a lot of this information at a glance. So back to the PowerPoint. OK, so how this is to be used. Um, as I said before, this started out really as a way to get oriented when approaching UX design work. Um, it can help us. Hello? Did I lose sound there? Oh. No, you're fine. OK. Um, it can help us think about where features might live or where they want to live if they don't live now. Um, it's also a good starting place for building screen flows. So if a task or a larger story spans more than one area of functionality or multiple features, the map can help illustrate the different areas a user would have to touch in order to move through all of them. Um, and so that's, this is how I, I anticipate it being used. The last the last link on this page is a link to the Winchester Mystery House. And for people, anyone who doesn't know, that is this crazy house that every time they wanted something new, they just tacked it onto the side of the house. So if they wanted a, another room, or there's sinks in the hallways and on stairways and windows that go nowhere, and it's just every time they thought of any little thing they wanted, they just added it to the house. And it, it, it's a wild place to go visit, but I don't think anyone would ever want to live there. Um, the next slide. Why do we need it? So this slide, I think, is really true. It's that 
New York designers love pictures. Um, that's how I, for one, really think about things. This came about as an artifact during the analysis and design effort of the past few months, and it was a way for me to interpret and understand the features and the requirements and put them in the context that, that I work in and understand and think of. And I also think it's a really a good and easy way, hopefully easy, to prepare to communicate the enrollment features and functionality to the rest of the UX team and to other people. So I'm hoping it's going to be a good tool going forward. In addition to using it for screen flows and prototyping, I think it can help us in thinking about different navigation schemes or how we might organize navigation, um, different screens that might be necessary for different levels of authorization or specific widgets that we might need to lead from one place to another. Um, what's next, coming next for this thing would be Again, it's going to expand and change through the development process. And additional layers of information could be added, I think, and could be really useful. For example, we could do something here on the sitemap, where right now this is organized by you, you look at the functionality through the, the features. But it, I think it would be really nice to be able to click on the advisor dashboard and see everything that you can do from there, so have it work both ways. So that's another layer of um, information and availability that I think could make this really useful and give it kind of longer legs. So um, that's one of the ways I think it's going to grow and change. Um, and I think that is about it. Where to find it? Last slide is just a, a link. Click there, and you can go and look at it and play with it and click on what's available to click on and see what happens. And again, this is very much a work in progress, so feedback is appreciated. I think that as we move into development, um, this, this file and this document is going to be available to all of the US designers. So as people are working on it, they, we can update it and change it and um, add to it. So that, that's about it for this. Am I supposed to look on the Google Doc for questions, or are, were there any? Uh, no, we're going to, I'll let you know in the follow-up session if there's specific. We're, given the size of the audience, we're not really doing Q&A okay. in this particular session. Yeah. So um, again, this is another, you know, there's so many tools for this project because there's so many different perspectives. There's the very functional, you know, feature-oriented approach. There's the UX design approach, the service contract perspective, obviously the developer perspective. And so I think what you're starting to see is that there really are a number of tools and artifacts available for you to help understand what, what enrollment is. And we actually really need all these perspectives. I think what's really nice about the application map is it does give people, particularly who aren't as steeped in the details um, around the functionality of enrollment, it gives a really nice visual. And it connects with the, with the end user, which is, I think, where a lot of people um, are going to be starting with, obviously. I mean, if you're a functional person, you're thinking about using the system. And so you're thinking about it from a user perspective. And this is a really nice place to plug into that. I think moving forward in parallel delivery, we're going to use some, some kind of framework like this to hang our work off of so we can have good visual representations of who's working on what and when and where we are in delivery. Because with so many moving parts, I think it's going to be pretty important to get a nice visual representation of that. So I just wanted to make, give you a chance to see that, see the UX perspective, see some of the work that's happening there, and see how the work on the business requirement side is actually getting, um, is informing the UX process. Because they're also a big consumer, obviously, of, our, of the business analysis artifacts. So thank you, Christina. And Christina's at a workshop this week, and so she kindly stepped out of her workshop to come and do this for us. So thank you. All right, so um, really that, that's the bulk of the content that we are going to talk about today. I'm just going to do a quick little wrap up. Um, you hold on one moment, please. OK. So. Let's talk about all right, let's talk about next steps. Um, 
So the follow-up to this session, again, I know we presented a lot of material, um, but hopefully gave you enough of a framework that now you can actually go and start digging into some of the requirements. Um, and I'll show you where the links to all that are um, so you can actually start doing your own self-study. Again, I think there are multiple um, audiences here today. I think one big audience is the University of Toronto, and they needed enough information to be able to start doing their own gap analysis. I think Boston College is somewhat in the same boat. There are a lot of people who are just new to the new to the project. Maybe their institutions aren't new, so they're just trying to acclimate. So um, hopefully, hopefully we hit all targets. Um, so at least you can go away and look at it from more specifically from your perspective, and you know where to find things. So uh, next Thursday we'll have a two-hour follow-up session, and this is really where you get to drive the agenda. This is all about us. Um, who are a little bit, have a little bit more expertise perhaps on the project will respond to questions that come up for you over the next week. Um, so post your questions and issues there um, and we will use the same logistics, same format. Um, this is about the best we can do on the project, so uh, sorry for some of the technical glitches, but um, it is what it is. Uh, the other thing is we have an evaluation. There's a short evaluation that I would appreciate you completing. It just gives us a sense of what was useful for you and what we can approve on since we do have um, five more of these sessions. In the, in the upcoming sessions, the first of which um, is, uh, oh, that's not correct. I'm sorry, the date on this is not correct. It's November 2nd, Module 2. That's when we'll do a deep dive into setup and people and permissions. Um, and that's where we'll really start walking through the business requirements, looking at the user stories, looking at what a data we have available, looking at the associated service contract. So we'll do a deeper dive into the materials at these sessions. I apologize for having the wrong date on there, but you can find the schedule on the wiki. Here, the wiki, you know, this is the best place to look for up-to-the-date information on on um, what is scheduled when. So that will be November 2nd. So it's two weeks from today is when we'll do a deep dive on enrollment environment. Let me bump up my screen here. Um, so we'll do a deep dive into people and permissions, um, set up time, and set up environment. Uh, again, I, I will be facilitating. Um, Steve will be the contact uh, SME for that, and Ruth will be the contact BA. Um, something to point out, and I think it's particularly important for Toronto doing their, their deep dives in, into the work, is the people listed in the SME and, and um, BA contact, they're your first point of contact for, for questions. So between, uh, they'll be sort of the ones helping to resolve issues that come up in the follow-up sessions and beyond. So they'll be kind of your little buddies for, for each of these modules. Uh, for the overview one, it's Steve and Dan, and there really isn't a BA contact since we talk primarily to, at a very high level. So we talked, this is the wiki page for today. I just want to point you to the fact that we've got, um, well, you don't care about the agenda anymore because we're done. We have the presentation slide deck site, so you can download that. And here are all the system, um, the current business artifacts, uh, ready for you to dive into now, hopefully. So they're arranged by functional area, the 10 functional areas. Um, we've got our terminology. Ignore the, please ignore the first column for a moment, and I'll circle back to that. We've got terminology, uh, system requirements, user stories, if there are business process models, um, then we have those available. In some cases, there's just not a lot of business processes or not main ones, so that's why we don't have any. Um, rules, candidates, where it applies, and data where it applies. So this is the state, this is the state of the union. I mean, and, and if any, I, I guess the work now and the challenge for, for those new to the project will be understanding, you know, I, if, if something seems to be missing, is it intentional? Is it oversight? Um, if something seems to be wrong to you, is it because we got it wrong or you don't understand? This will be just something that will be an ongoing basis that we'll just have to continually resolve. And I think we just have to acknowledge that it's going to be an education on both our parts because there will be some terminology differences. There will be different levels of expertise. So, but, but I encourage you to ask. 
ask. <laughs> if something doesn't seem right or something seems to be missing, let's talk about it because it could be, you know, you're on board now, you're here to contribute um, as well. So this is kind of just where the artifacts are and we all want the same thing here. We want the best artifacts possible. So um, that being said, uh, there's links to the application map, the follow-up session, and the evaluation, which I would um, strongly encourage you to complete. Uh, I think that's everything for today. Does any of the presenters have any last minute things? I think we're okay from this end. Thank you very much. Okay. No, nope, I'm good. <laughs> As Carol, said, this is uh, yes. William. Um, I'm curious. The this was. Uh, recorded and I'm presumably the recording is going to be put on the page you were just showing, right? Yes. Uh, we will have to evaluate the quality of said recording. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> we have some technical issues, but yes, it will be posted to, to this page. Right. That's a good point. Thank you. Yep. Great. Thanks, girl. Yep. All righty. With that, I bid you all a fond um, farewell and we will convene next Thursday for a follow-up session which will be more interactive. Thank you.